So I'm talking about which I call quasi patentable met surgical method claims. And then I, I'll go to my background. So I have an electrical engineering degree from Drexel and Columbia and went to law school. And I got involved in the spine industry with Nuvasiv doing EMG and nerve surveillance. And as part of that, I started looking at all the Gary Michelson patents, which are the, the prolific patents that got sold to Medtronic. And a lot of those were method patents. And at that time, there was a big change in the patent law to say that, well, method patents for surgical, surgical method patents will be considered still patentable, but we can't get remedies against the doctor or the medical facility where that method is practiced. So it created a very interesting paradigm where it makes it hard if you have just a medical method claim to protect your, your apparatus or your medical device if you're going to rely upon that because you have to do what we call contributory infringement. It's an extra step and, and that becomes more difficult. So that's why I'm talking about the pros and cons of a method claim versus an apparatus claim for protecting a medical device or for your, a tool that you use in surgery. So this is a case study. This is something we developed at Tory Spines, one of the companies I'm working with. <clears throat> they developed a tap for putting in a pedicle screw for either MIS or open, where this tap has a segment where there's gaps. We purposely have gaps at 35, 45, 55 millimeters. So as you advance this tap, you can with the by taking fluoroscopy, you can see the depth of the of the probe of the um, tap and then determine the screw there that you might want to use in the to implant in the pedicle. So we're looking at this, well how do we protect this? Do we want to look at method claims or apparatus claims to protect this product? And we have a patent application with allowed claims that we, we expect to issue shortly. And then I'll say how I so the first oops I'm doing it wrong. Where do I aim? So the first way we could protect it would be looking at the method. So in the, like, this is a two-step. As you put it in, as I show on the first, the left side, then you advance it and you keep taking pictures and you see the depth where you would stop and that would determine the screw without having to use a straight probe that you would want to implant in the patient. So in that is a possible method claim, I might say a method creating a threaded tap to desired depth, insert the tap with one or more discontinuous tap sections and advancing the tap and noting the depth. So that could be a possible method claim. And it's not necessarily tied to a particular instrument. We'll get into that later as a, a way that you can enforce a method claim. And then the other way to approach it is just to try to file an apparatus claim, to try to claim the tool itself even though and tie it to its particular field or use so that this is very similar to claims that are being allowed so a dense tissue tap apparatus, apparatus for creating a tap within a tissue to a desired depth elongated shaft a continuous tapping section and then the first depth marker separated by the tapping section by a reduced diameter section so you could approach this tool and its protection in, in two different ways the apparatus itself in its desired low, you know desired use or as the method itself and then I'll get into the pros and cons. So if it's a method claim, some people miss it, but one of the biggest advantages, you're not limited to the design. If someone infringes your method, if they use a different tool, has a different shape, a different size, it wasn't shown in your patent application, the exact same tool, they're still infringing. It doesn't have to be the same design or equivalence. And there's also another important thing is that there's no marking requirements. You can't mark a method patent, so you don't have to mark your tool. And there, from the moment your patent issues, you can collect damages. You can go back in time. Whereas an apparatus claim, you can't go. You you have a different. You have to mark it, and you have to put them on notice. And of course, the big disadvantage is 80% of the countries in the world you cannot get method claims for surgery are not enforceable. In the U.S. they are. You can the, the doctor in the medical center was performed in theory infringe, but there's no remedy. So they created this weird exception, which I'll get into history later if we have time, where the doctor they they infringe, but they're not liable for damages or injunction. And so then you have to you have to show contributory infringement. So if somebody else is making a product which you feel is used to infringe your method claim, your surgical method patent, you have to show either their apparatus has only one use. It's only possible use. They, they 
you call it fungible use, could be to infringe your method patent, or you find literature on their site or with their product or their surgical guide that says to do the steps at which infringe your method. And if they're smart, they're not going to do that. And there's a lot of off-label use. A lot of surgeons will take something and, you know, nod, nod, wink, wink. The the rep says, hey, you can use it this way, but you know, we're not. It's not officially what we describe. So that's pretty common. And then if we go to apparatus claims, the advantage of an apparatus claim is you do have direct infringement. You, you know, the problem is a lot of if the manufacturer of the products outside the U.S., you have to go to court or customs and appeals to say, I, can I prevent this from coming in the country? And so you, you can go after in theory the medical center and the doctor. And it's going to be valid in most countries, too, so you're not limited in jurisdictions. You can file a PCT and consider other jurisdictions. And if you can get protection in other countries, you can prevent that device from coming into the U.S. or even being produced elsewhere. And this, and I say we don't bite the hand that feeds you, but you can notice the doctor or the medical center just to say, hey, we got this patent. You might be interested in it, that it's infringing. We believe it's infringing our apparatus claims, but you're not going to follow through. It just, and then, then they might go, what has happened in the past, they then go to the manufacturer of who they're using and say, hey, we've got this notice that you're infring this apparatus that we're using from you is infringing this patent. We're worried. What should we do? Of course, you'd never, I would never follow through with a doctor or a hospital, but now they're a little nervous and it, and it gives you that a little more teeth. As a disadvantage is you have to market, you have to put the patent number on it somewhere, or you have, you have to show, actually send a letter with the patent to the person infringing before damages can start to accrue. And then, the, then it potentially, depending on your claims and your designs, you could be limited. Like I showed ours that had the discontinuous taps. If I put a bulb or different shapes, they might try to design around it. And it depend, so your apparatus claims are generally tied to what you show on your patent, whereas a method is not. So then, so my practice, what I've done and recommended the clients is actually to file two separate cases. You file the apparatus claims in one case, and you file continuation with just methods separately. And that way you have two approaches. You can go after them, you have the apparatus, which you can go after, you can notice this medical center or doctor and you get that benefit. And you have the method claims, which you don't have that marking requirement. And to the extent that you can show that the other product has no use but to infringe your method, then you can come after them for that too. And I, I put this in because this came up recently the, where they, they conf to confirm that $100 million award against Medtronic. And they were very craftful in their tissue retractor about claiming it in its particular use in the patient and able to enforce that against Nuvasiv. Even and so that you can work get the apparatus into the into the design. And this is what I was saying about this weird exception. Why do we have this? The rest of the world says let's not let's surgical method surgical patents. Surgical method patents are not, per se, patentable subject matter, but in the U.S. they are, and we created a weird exception. In 96, and I researched this for Nuvasiv, why do we have this weird exception? An eye surgeon sued another eye surgeon, something we wouldn't have. We wouldn't sue a surgeon for infringing our method. It just, but he, he created a very nice, very smart, he created a V-shape, and when you cut the eye, then when you don't need stitch, potentially don't need stitches for it to heal due to the shape and the pressure in the eye will heal naturally. And, and another surgeon started doing the same thing, and he went after him. And then Congress said, we can't have a doctor's arms tied for doing a particular search or technique. But there, you can tie it if it's tied to a particular tool or a very unique tool. So if the doctor's claims would have said a method of creating a, a V-shaped cut in the eye via a knife having a certain geometry or configuration, that can be enforceable. But that's what created this odd exception in the U.S. law that requires us to do contributory infringement. So they, the doctor and hospital infringe, but there's no remedy because we don't want to prevent a doctor from doing a procedure that is, is better for the patient. So that's, and like I said in the bottom, it's something that you and any manufacturer would never go after a doctor and hospital. It doesn't make sense. It's just, but this doctor sued another doctor and it created this weird anomaly in our law. And that, that's it. And any questions? <laughs> that's my home course, Torrey Pines South, number three. Question. Two uh, quick questions. One, you reference Section 112. What's, what is Section 112? And the other question is, I'm not clear on why 
you're recommending two separate patents, one apparatus, one method. I heard you say that, but I didn't hear enough explanation. Section 112 is the legal term that in a, in a patent application, Section 112 says that you have to disclose the invention to make it clear to one skilled in the art how to make and use it. So it has to have drawings that show what you claim. And so that's just the, the, the actual section. And the two separate is because then I get the benefit of both. The method claims require no marking, so if I am successful going after them, I can get damages all the way back to the date my patent issued. Whereas an apparatus claim, until they until it's until they're noticed, I could potentially only get damages from the point forward that I discover them infringing and let them know about it. So that's and if they're tied, if it's a mix, the case law says if you have both, you still require marking. You can't get it. So that's the, the advantage of splitting them.